Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021, and we are currently on day 163. And uh, we're basically doing one chapter because 1 Kings 7 and 2 Chronicles 4 uh, is just a, a repeat of, of themselves. And so this could be possibly the shortest recording in the series. And sometimes it, it just happens this way with uh, the chronicle, chronological um, reading that we're doing. So we're going to just go right into 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. And um, some of the things that we, we, we will note here, um, maybe you noticed it or not, it, it actually took longer to build um, Solomon's palace than the temple. And, and don't forget, he was, he was building two here. It says, uh, now as for Solomon's palace, it took 13 years for him to complete its construction. So as magnificent as the, the temple was, uh, Solomon's uh, um, palace was very intricate. Uh, and, and he built two of them um, that, that just looked like each other. And uh, when, when he built um, his wife's palace, remember, the, the, the princess, the, the daughter of the king of Egypt, um, he actually, he built that outside of Jerusalem. He moved her out of Jerusalem uh, because she was an Egyptian. And uh, there was some point where he got convicted about that. And so he honored her as his wife, gave her the palace, which he did not give to all the uh, other wives that he had. Um, and, but he made sure that she was moved out of, out of Jerusalem. Um, verse 7, this stood out for me, uh, the judging room. Uh, he made the throne room the hall of justice where he would judge. It was covered with cedar from the lower to the upper levels. Now, again, just to remind you, there's four offices. There's, um, and it's a way of dis distributing power uh, because the king was not supposed to be um, the absolute ruler. Uh, he represented uh, Yahweh, and his responsibility really was the prosperity of the land, the defense of the land. And it would have been with um, inter-foreign uh, affairs, if, if you want to put it that way. Um, so the, the other offices, if you remember, was the high priest, the head judge, uh, as well as the prophet. And, and the head judge was supposed to be one of the priests. Uh, and, and so he was supposed to oversee all the judges. Um, but we'll note that many of the kings took on that role themselves. And so um, he made the throne room, the hall of justice, where he would judge. It was covered with cedar from the lower to the upper levels. Can you imagine what that must have looked like, what that must have smelled like? Um, Mm -hmm. Just pointing that out. Uh, here in, in verse uh, 51, look, look, when all King Solomon's work on the Lord's temple was finished, he brought the silver, gold, and all the objects his father David had dedicated and put them in the treasuries of the Lord's temple. Uh, if you can remember back to when, when Yahweh started to reveal himself and, and people wanted to, to worship him as creator. Uh, and this is when they only knew him as creator. He was, he was specific in, in, in telling them uh, that he, uh, he didn't want to elaborate alt um, altars. He, he, if, if they were going to build him an altar um, for the purpose of sacrifices, then he wanted it built out of fertile soil, nothing permanent. That, that's, the, that's the beauty of, of the thing of, of Yahweh. Uh, that's why there isn't any, any um, footprints or anything that we can point our finger to, uh, to Jesus, is because Yahweh wanted everything natural and Unfortunately, with what has happened with creation, the natural state of it is, is uh, it's, it's not permanent. It's, it's a temporary place. So everything that is set up is to be temporary. And, and, and so when, 
he was describing the altars. He told them um, his preference was that they were to use fertile soil. And uh, if they had to use stone, then he didn't want any tools used on the stone. He just wanted the natural stone as they felt it, uh, found it, and they would have to fit, to fit it together to make an altar, nothing that was uh, permanent. It was David's idea to build this elaborate temple, and then Sol Solomon built upon it, uh, upon David's ideas, and made it even more ornate um, than, than what David even had intended. And so when we read this and the, the doors covered in gold and all this bronze and, and silver and all these things, um, we, we realize by the time Solomon's done, the temple was just a far cry from the altar uh, made of fertile soil or the non-carved stone that, that Yahweh preferred. Um, and, and yet he saw the heart that it came from. And although it wasn't his preference, he, he understood that it, it was an act of honoring and an act of love. And so he received it from them. Just like parents receive those beautiful fridge drawings, you know, that the children do for them. Not perfect, not ideal, maybe not even anything that we ask for, but because it's a gift from the child, then it goes up in, in a place of honor. Uh, in verse uh, 22, um, as for the temple entrance, the inner doors to the most holy place, as well as the doors to the main hall, were made of gold. It's just it would have been impressive. We, as, as human beings in this humanity, would have been impressed by the grandeur of this place, by its ornate nature. It just, it would have been overwhelming, breathtaking for us because we put value in these things, these, these gems and these, this gold and silver and these precious um, metals. Um, but the thing was, that it was, as we were looking at yesterday, it's not what impressed Yahweh. Um, you know, what's impressive to a person is not impressive to Yahweh. Um, what, what he's impressed by um, is, is a loving, humble, and obedient heart. That's what he's looking for. That's, that's his temple. The heart, just as we were talking about yesterday, the heart is his temple. That's his preferred temple. And, and he can come. And, and Jesus said, you know, as we walk in obedience, Father's pleased with us. And he and dad will come and live in us, you know, that, he, that we would be one with him, walking in this place of, of love and humility and, and obedience. Uh, that he prefers this much more than any huge temple such as Solomon had built for him. So there you go. That's really all that we have to say about uh, today's uh, today's reading. So maybe there's a lot of other things that you you got out of it. It's very impressive to read through and 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 uh, see how beautiful it all is. But um, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. Probably the shortest recording we've we've done so far. So you guys have a blessed and wonderful day, and and I I, I pray that you'll just take the heart uh, what it is that we're discovering in just in these last couple of days. Uh, that his, his preferred temple is, is our heart, is, is our love, is our obedience. Um, so you guys have a, a great day. Uh, find ways to serve him by serving other people. And uh, we'll catch up together again tomorrow. God bless.